The Orlando Magic get a taste of the playoffs and a major lesson in the process. And should the Magic be concerned with it all? It's time to get to it on today's episode of Locked On Magic. You are Locked On Magic, your daily Orlando Magic podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Don Magic, today is March 9th, 2024. My name is Philip Rossman Reich. I'm the expert and site editor over at Orlando Magic Daily.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Philip RR underscore OMD. On today's episode of Locked On Magic, the Orlando Magic get a taste of the playoffs and it did not taste good. How the New York Knicks demolished the Magic, why it happened, what the Magic can learn and whether we should be concerned by it. We'll get to all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, we want to thank you again for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day, no matter when you listen to us, whether it's first in the morning, whether it's right when we upload. We truly appreciate you making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Remember, there's a great Locked On podcast covering every single team in the NBA. Just search for Locked On and the team you're looking for. The Locked On Podcast Network, it's your team every day. So we hyped the game up. We did it again. We hyped the game up. We said this is an important game. This is a statement game. This is a a game that's going to prove a lot about the Orlando Magic. And what did they do? Well, they laid an egg. You can see the score over on the rundown if you're watching on YouTube. The New York Knicks defeat the Orlando Magic 98-74. to It is the fewest points scored in the NBA this season by the Orlando Magic, by by a team. It is actually the fewest points scored in an NBA game uh, by a single team since December 2020. Not a bunch of good history for the Orlando Magic. And look, all credit to the New York Knicks. They had a great defensive game plan. They played with intensity. They played with fire. Uh, and the Magic had a bad night, had a bad shooting night, and, and couldn't figure them out and just couldn't get themselves going. Now, there was a lot to say about that. And, and you know, we could come up with plenty of excuses. Uh, my, my only statement, of course, is that in the playoffs, there are no back-to-backs. There are no three games in four nights. Playoffs are essentially as, as perfect. There's no traveling to multiple cities and long road trips. The playoffs are essentially as perfect conditions as you can have for each team. The Knicks coming off two days rest. It, it, this wasn't a perfect storm, and I, I don't think we should blame that. The Magic should have played a lot better. But... This is the ultimate thing. The New York Knicks are a team where almost every player on that roster has played in the playoffs. Every important player, at least, has played in the playoffs. Every player on the Orlando Magic, save four, have not. And so what the Magic are looking for, what the Magic need, and what the Magic are short on, and what is a reason to be skeptical about them, even if they did get the four seed in the playoffs, is they don't have playoff experience. They have not been tested. They don't know the intensity of a playoff game. And so Friday night at Madison Square Garden, the Magic felt that. The Magic, not just kind of in the way that maybe they did in the past where teams kind of had the energy about them. They felt what a playoff game is going to feel like. From the atmosphere to the intensity to the physicality to the way the refs called it, that was a playoff game. And the Magic didn't rise to meet the moment. Just plain and simple. This was a big game. The Magic knew it was a big game. The Knicks knew it was a big game. You and I knew it was a big game. The fans at the Garden knew it was a big game. The Magic did not meet the moment. And again, credit the New York Knicks. They had a great defensive game plan. They executed it well. They they put a huge punch on the Magic early. Orlando got staggered and never got up. This is, a, this is a resilient team. I don't think this is, you know, we'll get to big game concerns here in a minute. This is a resilient team. I'm not concerned about this loss costing them Sunday. I'm not concerned about a lot of things in this loss. But the Knicks put the magic down. They got up, and while they didn't make it like a 30-point runaway, they, they got to 20, 23, three, you know, Orlando never threatened. This was never a game. And a lot of that is because 
of the way this game was played. Again, this was a playoff game. It was played with playoff intensity, and the Knicks brought it. And the Magic, it seemed like, felt like they could ease themselves into the game, which has been a consistent and constant mistake this group has made. They felt It felt like they believed they could ease themselves into the game. That they could get a feel for how things were and adjust and, and, and come back at them. That, that's not how the playoffs are going to work, guys. That's not how things work here. The Knicks got up. They were led 8-0 and 13-3. And while Orlando hung tough in the first quarter, they were trailed by 8 after one quarter. They never again really threatened. Even opportunities they had to cut in the lead, sure, the Magic missed shots and missed open shots, but the ball got stuck on one side. The Knicks did a good job funneling the Magic into areas where they could bottle them up, where they could send multiple bodies on drivers and prevent them from getting to the basket, where they could get to deflections and, and tip out tip outs and, and make sure that the Magic couldn't make clean passes to the perimeter. Orlando was stagnant as heck. It was bad. Like this, this, like this was a bad offensive game. The Magic have had some stinkers, but they've never been this bad. And sure, some of it is Orlando missed shots at the rim that they normally make. Some of that is the Magic missed open shots that they've been making lately. But at the same time, that is a credit to the Knicks. They sped the Magic up. They made them hurry. They made them rush. They made them play out of their game. Orlando could not play Magic basketball because of the Knicks. And look, I I didn't think Orlando's defense was horrible. Orlando ended up with like a 115 um, defensive rating. So despite giving up only 98 points, it's the second time the Magic have lost a game giving up fewer than 100 points this year. Despite giving up only 98 points, this was a below average defensive game for the Magic. Again, pace matters. The Magic and Knicks are both teams that like to slow the game down. They play low possession games, 86 possessions in this game. That's actually lower than what the Knicks usually have. That's lower than what the Magic usually have. Magic are at 98, I want to say, coming up on 97. The Knicks are at like 97. This was a slow game. But guess what? That's how the playoffs are. Every time it felt like the Magic were making a push, they get stopped at the rim, they get a shot blocked. They turned to the refs and look, and the refs were not helping them. That's how the playoffs are. And look, the Magic were allowed to be just as physical as New York was, so I don't want to blame the refs. The refs called this even. It was a fair game. It was physical. There was a lot of pushing, a lot of shoving, and the Knicks adjusted and played through it. The Magic didn't. They're going to have to learn to do this in the playoffs. Like I said, This was a playoff game. It was played like a playoff game. It had the intensity of a playoff game, the crowd of a playoff game. This was a playoff game. And the Magic, again, just genuinely didn't seem to rise to the occasion. They looked staggered by the intensity of it all. And yeah, some of that is being in Madison Square Garden, a place where the Magic have played well, by the way. It's not like they're they're in awe of the arena, but those places are different in the playoffs. Everyone knows what's at stake at this point. Like, no one's hiding from it. Everyone is thinking about April. We've been talking about it, and I've been talking about it. I've been saying, hey, yes, this stuff is important, but let's have an eye on April. Let's, ha- let's, let's keep half an eye on April. Well, guess what? Everybody now has that eye on the playoffs. Everybody now is thinking, What's this going to look like in a series? What's this going to look like here? The Magic got a major playoff lesson here. They got a major, they got a feel for what that crowd, that hostile crowd is going to be like. They got a feel about what a team that is desperate for a win is going to do. They got a feel for how teams are going to attack them. Because trust me, it isn't just the Knicks that are going to overload the strong side and force difficult passes or traps on drives. That's how you defend the Magic in a playoff series. And some teams will be very good at it. Some teams are not. The Knicks are going to be very good at it, especially when OG Ananobi's back in the lineup, which he should be this weekend for them. The Magic got a feel for what all that feels like. And hopefully they got a bad taste of what failure on that stage looks like. At the end of the day, this is disappointing. I'm not going to lie. I expected more from this team. This team should be a lot better. We're going to talk a little bit about some of those concerns 
coming up here in a moment. But it's better to learn these lessons now in March than to deal with them in April. But the only thing we know, though, it, the only thing we know is that the Magic received the lesson. The Knicks, as the more experienced team, were the more assertive, the more aggressive, the more poised, the more intense team, and the Magic did not match. They got frustrated. They got sped up. They were playing on their back foot. The playoffs take poise. They take maturity. They take aggression. The Magic didn't have that. And so now... The Magic have to see if they've learned it. And we may learn and see some of this stuff on Sunday when the Magic take on the Pacers in a humongous game now. But that's not the only place, obviously. We won't know how ready this team is until they're actually in the playoffs. This was practice. And practice at the Magic came up short in. Lesson learned, question mark? We'll find out very, very soon. We got to go through it. We got to go through the motions. We got to do what we got to do. We're going to go through the final box score, talk a little bit about individual performances here coming up in just a moment. We want to thank you for making Locked On Magic part of your day every day. Be sure to check out the Locked On, the Locked On Sports Day 24-7 streaming channel, which you can find on YouTube or on the Amazon Fire T on the Amazon Fire Channels app, as well as the Amazon Fire app. Uh, Locked On Sports Today is your 24-7 source for all sports news with breakdowns from the Locked On hosts like myself, as well as our national shows too. Get the latest on sports 24-7. You can find that on the on you on YouTube or on the Amazon Fire Channels app. Okay, we're gonna get to big game concerns because because now you know. One game doesn't matter. There's one of 82. You have bad days. It sucks that the Magic had a bad day in a big spot. Magic had a bad day. End of a road trip. You know, team that had, the Knicks had two days off coming into this. Like, they, they had the rest advantage. They had the fire, you know, not beating the Magic at this point in the season. Like, there's a lot working against Orlando. Like I said, the playoffs will get you perfect uh, condition or perfect conditions as you can get. Um, so, like, at the end of the day, like, look, we know the Magic are going to struggle offensively. They didn't have Jalen Suggs in this game. Like, just like the Knicks didn't have their guys, I'm not going to draw wide conclusions from a bad game. Um, I think that a lot of the things that we saw the Magic have trouble with um, are things that we know they have trouble with. We know that they will sometimes have bad shooting nights. Like, that's part of who they are. They've been shooting the ball very, very well. That's part of the reason why they're on this winning streak that they've been on the last 16, 17 games. Um, but they had a bad shooting night. We know that they lack a point guard. Um, and, you know, I think games like this, and we'll see, I think we'll see this in the playoffs, honestly. As good as Paolo Bancaro and Franz Wagner are in initiating sets, they still need someone that can calm the team down, get, you know, kind of get everyone back on task knows how to get the ball to their to their teammates in the right spot at the right time and just get the team moving again. That was something that was lacking in this game because the Magic had to start Anthony Black with Jalen Suggs out. And, and look, Jalen Suggs isn't a great point guard either necessarily. Um, but because they had to start Anthony Black, Paolo Bancaro was doing a lot of organizing. Franz Wagner was doing a lot of organizing. And those two players are scorers at heart uh, and downhill scorers at heart. And I think New York did a very good job using that against them because both players were trying to get downhill, but not necessarily trying to pass out, not trying to pass the ball back out or spray it back out. And they did a good job closing down a lot of those gaps. And, 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 and again, just taking the magic out of everything they did. Then you add the physicality, the pressure that they put on the ball, especially on the perimeter at times. Orlando just couldn't break free and, and they were just struggling to get into their sets, let alone execute. They couldn't get into their sets. And so again, a lot of credit to New York and the pressure defense they put on. Orlando does this to teams too, by the way. This is this is part of Orlando's defense. And Orlando, I thought, had a lot of really good defensive moments, even early in New York, made some tough shots. And so you had this weird combination, and this happens in the playoffs too. Like playoff, there's there are a lot of like weird 30 point blowouts in the playoffs. Um and it happens where 
one team's really cold at the start, one team's really hot at the start. Now, all of a sudden, the team that's trailing feels that pressure and tries to get it back. And and, and that's kind of what happened in this game, where the Magic were defending. And I thought early on, we're really focused on their defense and trying to establish their defensive tone. And New York was doing that too. But the difference was New York made their shots. They were able to get the Magic into rotations, and the Magic didn't. The Magic didn't make those shots early, didn't make the good looks that they got early, and so all of a sudden you start seeing the team press. I, I will argue, and, and 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 maybe this is something I look up uh, tomorrow as well, the Magic's first quarters have been a problem lately, and they've been able to get away with it because they've been playing bad opponents. A bad first quarter in this game really, really crushed them. Like, it was it was bad uh, for the Magic to, to, to play this poorly. And so, look, we could go through the numbers. They're not pretty. Paolo Bancaro is really the only player that quote unquote showed up. Um, 23 points, six for tw- nine for 20 shooting, two for three from three, three for five from the foul line, nine rebounds, two assists, four blocks, four turnovers. At four of the Magic's 14 turnovers. Um, look, I, I really like that Paolo was able to get downhill. He was able to get two shots. He he rose to the moment, at least offensively, in the first half. Second half, I thought he was starting to force things a little bit too much. He was starting to look a little exasperated to the refs. Um, but I, I want to point this number out, and I'll point out the next number out too. Franz Wagner, 13 points, 6 for 20 shooting, missed all five of his three-pointers, four rebounds for him. I want to point out that both Paolo and Franz had 20 field goal attempts. That is usually not a good sign. That's not who this team is. That's 40 of the Magic, 79 field goal attempts coming from two players. The Magic had 12 assists on 27 field goal makes. This is what the Knicks did. Now you want Paolo and Franz to be aggressive. You want them to get downhill. You want them to do these things. But they have to be creators. They had two assists between them, both from Paolo. That will not get the job done. So what New York did really well, and if you want to watch the game back, you will see it. A lot of one pass attack, one pass possessions, a lot of no pass possessions, a lot of ball getting stuck on one side, not going from one side of the court to the other or inside out. It was a very stagnant game. The, the, the Knicks turned the magic into isolation artists. And that's not going to get the job done. It's okay if the magic shoot late in the shot clock. That's all right. That's part of who this team is. But they cannot settle for jumpers, and they they have to understand we've got to get the ball moving. And again, credit to the Knicks defense. They took away a lot. The Magic, I, I honestly think these two players were doing what they felt they had to do when no one else was getting it going. They felt like they had to attack, but this is the problem. The Magic were just on their back foot all game. Wendell Carter is going to be the flashpoint for a lot of people in this game. Seven points, two for eight shooting, two for four from three. Seven uh, seven offensive rebounds for Wendell Carter. Only nine total. He only had two defensive rebounds. Um, three is three turnovers as well. You know, look, I, I've said this a million times. I, I will probably say this for the rest for the rest of the offseason too. Um, Wendell Carter is the Rorschach test on this team. Um, you can see what you want to see in him. And tonight, this was not a good game for Wendell Carter. He got outworked on the glass by Isaiah Hartenstein. Um, Precious Achua destroyed Paolo. It wasn't, it wasn't when Precious Achua had 20, had 15 points, 14 rebounds, including three offensive rebounds. Knicks had 11 offensive rebounds as a team. They scored, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, 14 second chance points off 11 offensive rebounds. Um, they were outworked the magic on the glass. And some of that is Wendell has to do a better job commanding the paint. Uh, some of that is Paolo has to do a better, Paolo looked like he felt like he had the night off defensively. I'm not going to lie about that. I was really unimpressed with Paolo's defense um, because he was guarding Precious Achua and he, you know, Achua made two threes, but he's not a three-point shooter. So he felt like if Achua was out of the paint, he could roam around a little bit and that lowered his overall defensive intensity, especially on the glass. Um, again, when you're trying to make up a, make a, make a, de- make up a deficit, you can't be giving up offensive rebounds. And, and a lot of those offensive rebounds felt very, very big. Um, so again, you look at that off the bench, Jonathan Isaac was Jonathan Isaac had a really nice game, by the way. 11 points, four for six shooting, six rebounds. Uh, I love Jonathan Isaac's game. I thought he played really, really well. Um, the Magic were, you know, certainly felt like he was a key player and having trying to get back into this game. But that's after after that, that's about it. No one else really did anything. And, and I have to say, 
you know, everyone's going to point to the backcourt. Uh, five total points. Gary Harris scored all five of them. Two for five shooting for Harris. Anthony Black, 0 for 5, 0 for 2. I, I thought Anthony Black started off playing really good defense on, on Jalen Brunson. Brunson hit a couple shots, and you could see him get frustrated. He's a rookie. He's still learning that, hey, some of the, sometimes the best players in the league are going to take what you give them and still score. That's okay. But I think he let that affect the other parts of his game. And especially, I think, offensively, Black looked like he was bothered by the pressure. And it looked like Black was a little timid. And I would say that was how a lot of the other Magic players looked. Look, um, I said it earlier. The playoffs are about poise. They're about maturity. They're about aggression. They're about assertiveness. What can you do? How confident are you to solve this problem when, when the other team knows and is keying in on your tendencies? That's something we don't know about the Magic. The Knicks really locked in on them. Kind of used their aggression against them in a lot of ways. And completely took them out of their game. You could just see Orlando was just uncomfortable. They just weren't... It, it, I don't want to say they were unprepared for it, but experiencing it for the first time was, you know, I was at the UCF Iowa state game uh, last Saturday and everyone knows Iowa state is a really high pressure defensive team, really good defensive team, top 10 team in the country. And we asked Johnny Dawkins after the game and he was like, you know, it, it's not that we didn't tell them or, or prepare them for pressure, but when you experience it for the first time, you're sometimes taken aback and you have to adjust. The issue in this game is the Magic never adjusted to that pressure. They let it speed them up. They, they, they never got comfortable. And again, that's a credit to the Knicks. The Knicks did the job. But look, I could go through any number of numbers, and, and that's ultimately what matters. The Magic couldn't take advantage of opportunities. They did get, because their defense showed up. Like, the Magic's defense struggled early, put them in a hole, not going to deny that, but the defense played well enough to give this team a chance to win. And it was just on the Magic's offense to find some gaps. And they didn't. You know, they they, they lost the second half by eight. So I'm not going to say you're saying the Magic won, you know, won or any, or would won if not for that opening, opening salvo. But the Magic never got themselves going. And that's the part this team still has to figure out. And it's going to be tested the rest of the season. Obviously, this was a big game. It's a game that we hyped up a ton. So should we be concerned that the Magic didn't show up? Why, there's a pattern developing that might be a little concerning. We'll get to that coming up here in just a moment. Okay, like I said, I don't, I don't want to overhype or overreact to one game. If you know me, if you've listened to the show, you know, I'm pretty even keeled. And, and, and I think I've gone in on the team a lot today. Like, I, I, you know, like like for those that don't think I'm critical of the team or or go crazy on the team, like I, I'm going in on them today. Like they, 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 they did not perform at the level they're going to need to. And if they want to be a playoff team, if they want to succeed in the playoffs, if they want to continue shocking everybody and, you know, show us that, hey, this isn't just our first trip. This is we're we're here to play. They've got to be a lot better. And I hyped this game up. I know a lot of Magic fans hyped this game up. Nick's hyping this game up. This was a true playoff test. This was a true playoff atmosphere. It was big for everybody. Everyone could feel it. You know, the standings reflect it now. New York is a half game ahead of Orlando for fourth. The road, you know, that road now goes through Madison Square Garden instead of the Kia Center. The Magic gave up that control with this loss. It's big. And if the Magic would have lost a close game, I don't think we'd be sitting here, you know, I think we'd still be encouraged, to be perfectly honest, if the Magic lost a close game, even with who the Knicks are missing. We'd say, okay, the Magic went on the road. They played tough. Now we have a sense that they can do it. And just like they said after the game, now they got a taste of the playoffs. They were already much further ahead than maybe we thought. It'll be fine when they get to April. Well, here's the thing. Now they're not. Now they lose a 20 by 24 points on the road in a playoff atmosphere. What does that mean for that trip to 
Cleveland, that trip to New York, that trip to wherever for game one. What does that mean for game one at the Kia Center? That's something maybe we'll study a little bit on Sunday. But here, but here's the thing. The last time we hyped a game up as super duper important as having humongous standings implications. The Magic also got worked. It was a 25-point loss, I think, to the Miami Heat at Casilla Center down in Miami. That game came at the end of a long road trip. It was certainly a potential schedule loss. It, it, it was not the end of the world that the Magic lost the game or how the Magic lost the game because if you watch that game, they clearly looked tired. Now, I could certainly argue that, okay, this was not quite a schedule loss, but the Knicks had all the advantages. Yes, there are questions about whether Jalen Brunson would play or not, and Jalen Suggs was a late scratch, and so maybe that would have changed a few things. I don't think it would have. The Knicks had a lot of schedule advantages, and, and maybe they took advantage of it. But I would not describe how the Magic played today as tired. They got beat. You know, they, they looked game and ready to play, and then the pressure hit them, and they were just staggered. They were taken aback. That game in Miami, they looked tired. So those are two games with humongous standings implications now, back-to-back games with huge standings implications now, that the Magic just kind of no-showed. So again, it's one thing to fight and lose. It's another thing to get blown out, to not really be in the game to begin with. So is that a concern, then, that the Magic aren't competitive in these playoff-type games? I think it might be because this team is very unproven. Now we've seen this team play in the in season tournament and they stepped up to the pressure pressure. They put on themselves granted after losing to the Brooklyn Nets. And again, another big game that maybe the magic didn't quite understand how big it was because they lost by 20. They didn't play great, but they were in the game in the third quarter until Brooklyn blew them out. And they said throughout the rest of the didn't season tournament, now we know every game is important. We can't take games for granted. So they beat the Chicago Bulls, game that they held on to. They beat the Boston Celtics and gave themselves a real chance to advance in that tournament. So we know they can play in big games. That, that game against Boston back on Black Friday in November, that was a huge game. That was a, a big game. But it was also at home. It was also at the Kia Center with a charged crowd ready to cheer them on. So maybe what we'll learn Sunday against Indiana and what I will tell you is a must-win game. You know what? I, I went into this weekend thinking if the Magic win both of these games, they beat the Knicks, they beat the Pacers, the fourth seed is theirs. They've proven to us they can beat these good teams. They can take care of their business in pressure situations. That four seed is theirs. I thought if they split it, it it's like, okay, they split these two games, plenty to learn. They're about what we thought they were. Six seed or above, six, five or six seed, certainly doable, certainly possible, certainly the goal. Still is. Doesn't change just because of this loss. You lose both of these games now. Now you've fallen back to the pack. Now you've given Indiana a lifeline. Let's not forget that. Or Indiana's two and a half games back. They are struggling like crazy right now. You beat them here. You're three and a half up with 16 to go. Again, not impossible for them to come back. We're still eyeing Cleveland, who's three and a half ahead of Orlando. uh, Or now four and a half ahead of Orlando. Um, We're still eyeing some of these teams, but that task gets a lot harder. And now you've swept them. Just like the Knicks were trying to avoid a, a series sweep. The Pacers are trying to avoid a series sweep. Remember, Orlando still owns a tiebreaker with New York. So all they have to do is tie. Half game, New York's got a game in hand. Um, Indiana, Magic owned the season series. They won that season series already. They just have to avoid tying. They just have to, they just have to tie them to, to beat them. But we don't want to leave any doubt. We don't want to give the eight-seeded Pacers any hope of climbing up to catch the Magic. That's why this game is big. And so maybe what the Magic just need is to be at home and feel that home crowd and feel that home energy in order to put themselves 
in order to in order to to um win those big games. But here's the thing. Like we talked about it a lot. The Magic have been feasting on bad teams. And that's fine. There's no shame in that. The good teams build their records on be- beating bad teams. Most of the good teams, only the really good teams are far above 500 against teams with records above 500. The Magic are slightly below 500, but they're right around 500 against good teams. It's not that the Magic can't beat these teams. They beat the Knicks three times, obviously. Say what you want about those games. They beat them three times. They beat the Nuggets. They swept the Nuggets this year. Potential champion. They beat the Celtics in a, in a pressure game. We know they can win these games. But now they got to do it with that pressure. Now they got to do it with the intensity that comes from a playoff game. That's the part we don't know. That's the part that's still unproven. And that's the part that this team hasn't been able to overcome yet, especially on the road, because more likely than not, the Magic Corps, I think 16 and 19 in road, no, that doesn't sound right. They don't have six home, six road games left. Um, because five of the last seven are on the road. Um, actually, yeah, they only have six games, six road games left. Whatever the case is. The Magic are like two or three games under 500 um, on the road. They're going to have to win a road game in the playoffs. It's something they will have to prove. And now they got to prove, and they're not going to have many opportunities to do so. The schedule is still fairly light. You know, they got Golden State coming up, who's playing better. They got the Clippers coming to the Kia Center. They got a lot of home games. Their road games are Toronto, New Orleans, Charlotte, Houston, Milwaukee, Philadelphia. That's their road schedule the rest of the year. They got the eight-game homestand coming up. The Magic have feasted on bad teams, and that's fine, but they still have to prove themselves against good teams late in the season with the pressure on. And that's the test they failed again against New York. That's the test they have yet to overcome. And unfortunately, we're not going to know if they can pass this test really until that game at Philadelphia. Let's let's circle it now. The, the penultimate game of the season could have major standings implications, could be going up against an MV, you know, an MVP caliber player in Joel Embiid on the road late in the year. That could be the next time we really see say, okay, th- this team's ready for the playoffs. Let's see what this team does in a playoff in a hostile playoff atmosphere. This team is unproven. And unfortunately, as much as we want the manager to get positive press and positive attention, I think everyone is going to wait for this team to prove themselves before they give it. Fortunately, the magic gets to get right back on the horse. I will repeat this. I haven't said it to today, but I am repeating this over and over and over again. Sunday needs to be a playoff dress rehearsal. Sunday needs to have playoff intensity. What the Madison Square Garden crowd gave the New York Knickerbockers on Friday night, the Kia Center crowd needs to give the Orlando Magic on Sunday night. We need to put the we need to be that sixth man and stagger the Pacers the way the Magic, the way the Knicks fans staggered the Magic on Friday. The Kia Center needs to show the Orlando Magic what home court advantage means. And the Magic need to, of course, take care of their business and win this game because I'll say it, Sunday is a must-win game. They must beat the Pacers. Get the bad taste of this game out of their mouth and prove, if not to themselves, they're ready for playoff intensity. I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked On Magic. Of course, find me on Twitter at philiprr underscore omd. Subscribe to the podcast and Apple Podcasts. Just tune in him like Google Play, Spotify, Odyssey, and all of them. You podcast podcasts to your podcast-enabled listening device. For the latest on the Orlando Magic, be sure to check out orlandomagicdaily.com. You can, of course, follow me on there on Twitter at omagicdaily. Be sure to also check out my Patreon page, the Orlando Magic Hub. I have a free article up on the Patreon page talking about how Mo Wagner has made significant improvements on defense 
what that defense means for the Orlando Magic. You can find that at patreon.com slash Orlando Magic Hub. And if you like that kind of content, or that kind of extra articles, you can subscribe and join the community there, join my growing community there. And of course, thank you all again for your support. That's going to do it for me today. Today, though, I want to thank you all again for listening to today's episode of Locked on Magic. For Orlando Magic Daily and Locked on Magic, this has been Phil Frostman-Reich. We'll see you all again next time for another episode of Locked on Magic.